This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say, our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Um, Mad Canadian is located in Cary, Ohio, just outside of Finley, Ohio. They are Ohio-based, but you can purchase it from anywhere in the country. So it doesn't matter if you're right next door or all the way across the country, you can get yourself one of the great seasons over at the mad Canadian BBQ.com. Again, that is the mad Canadian BBQ.com. Now, if you are fortunate and are living in Ohio, be sure to hit up his social medias to figure out, to find out where his, him and his food truck are heading to next. Again, check out Facebook, check out Twitter, search up the mad Canadian BBQ and see where he and his food truck are coming. Be sure to check us in the middle of the show here to to listen to the different seasonings that he has over at his website. Um, be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. McKinney Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Much like Kyle just said, uh, this is an Ohio-based company. Now, we're... We're, we're a little bit further north. We're in the uh, Perrysburg, Toledo area. But it also kind of doesn't matter because it's 2021 and we have the Internet and we have and we ship everything. So it's fine. You can get a bag of it anywhere you want, I assume, within the entire country, maybe even slightly further. But I'm only going to promise country. Um Let's see. What what did Nomad just say? Got a bag of Dylan's grog and a bag of Irish cream on the way. Oh my goodness! Are those are those proper? Are those proper Iron Bean coffees, Nomad? Or okay, okay I have. I guess I haven't been on the site in a minute. Because I know, by, uh, yeah, we're still in the ad read. Uh, they actually have started up like a little side coffee company that has uh, a lot more flavored options so if you are more into flavored coffees they have uh the the new label which is just called murder coffee and you can check that out uh also over at ironbeancoffee.com um it's gone again well okay i guess don't don't get too excited about that grog um, but, uh, they, they do have, like I said, all sorts of great flavored coffees under the murder coffee brand. Uh, but they also have the mom's carrot cake, the intense blueberry and the mint chocolate chip. Now there's also plenty, plenty, also a bunch, a bunch of, uh, non-flavored coffees, which is, well, uh, you know, aside from like a salted caramel or something a little simple, those are about the only flavored coffees I like, but, uh, lots of just traditional uh, dark roast and medium roast, and there's even a medium light roast. But uh, that's that's it for this ad read. You can you can uh, go check out IronBeanCoffee.com to see all the coffees for yourself. And once again, that is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Okay. Well, okay. This is this is an update just for the YouTubers apparently. He says disregard it's still there. You know, make up your mind. Make up your mind, Nomad. Listen, I have to ask you a question, Nomad. The vodka's typing. I have to ask you a question. How do you get stuff shipped to you if you're a Nomad? I I I think that's a very valid question. <laughs> I was about to explain what it meant, but I think everyone here is smart enough to to understand what that means. Mm. Kind of like Domino's, they deliver to a sidewalk. You know, fair enough. Uh, you, you still have to be like within driving distance of said. <laughs> Thank you, Austin. All right. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's get to the show. We've got Barbecue back here. back here. You're all invited. invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right over here. How are you doing today, Jared? 
uh, you know, I decided to throw a little reverb in my voice just just for that just for that opening. I figured, yeah. hey, why not? It's fun. Nomad telling me they do still have the grog over because uh, I said the wrong thing in the ad read apparently because he told me it wasn't there, but I guess it's still there. You just have to scroll all the way down to the bottom. So I've corrected that. I asked Nomad a very difficult question that the YouTuber you have to yeah I guess you're just gonna have to watch on YouTube to figure out what that very difficult question was. Yeah, they actually they actually have a lot still in stock as we're recording this it says dylan's guard there are 713 in stock it'll go it'll <laughs> go there's a reason they're telling you the exact number because it's a limited release they'll go yep all right we do have um some items that we got lined up here today's show um first thing that we're going to go ahead and talk about one of our favorite things we'd love to talk about all year and that is black stripes that's right even even though it is spring, we still have a our very first black stripe of 2021 to talk about. Yeah, um, a lot of the hype, especially at the defensive end position coming into this year, involve uh, a kid from Seattle who's not even committed yet, although we're, we all feel very optimistic. A kid from right down the road in Ohio uh, in Jack Sawyer, and you know he's already getting Bosa comparisons, and the the hype coming out of spring camp is also pretty great. But neither of those guys, especially the kid who's not in camp, uh, they didn't get their black stripe removed first. No, 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 no. Uh, strong side defensive end from Charlotte, North Carolina, which is close enough to Kyle for me to to point it out. Uh, is the first member of the 2021 class. Excuse me, the 2020 class. No, I said it right. The 2021 class uh, to get his stripe removed. That's, uh, you know, there was a lot of names, a lot of names that people, you know, lots of hype around Henderson, lots of hype around Jack Sawyer, uh, pick a wide receiver, uh, lots of hype around a lot of guys. I don't know how many people saw it coming that it was going to be uh, Jacoby Cohen. Yep for those yep for those who don't remember, he's a four star de strong defensive end, um, ranked seventeenth in his um, as all actually as a defensive tackle, seventeenth defensive tackle in the country, hundred sixty third and nationally. Um, uh, has a, has a, has a lot of upside and yeah I'm, I I for one did not anticipate him to be the first um person to get his black stripe removed but that that says a lot about him um Buckeye Zach asks us uh, who do you or no how many how many players do you think will lose their black stripe by the end of spring camp so we already have one I like I like five I think five is a good number I was gonna say four because I was basically I feel like one of the running backs, at least. I feel like Jack Sawyer will probably get his removed and at least one of the wide receivers. So I would say at minimum. And then, of course, I added Cohen in on that number at minimum four. Yeah. So let's let's set the bar at four and a half. There you go. We'll say four and a half. You guys, you guys bet away on that. Mm hmm. The real question, Kyle, is – oh, everyone's saying over. <laughs> uh, the real question, Kyle, is will any of those freshmen make our scarlet or gray teams when we draft our own spring teams? Hmm. We'll find out here soon. Um, but a couple, couple more soon. items here coming uh, before we get into that here, Jared. Uh, sticking with uh, football – um, fortunate news here. Um, we do have seven banks and Cameron Bob out for the rest of spring due to injuries. It, it hurts me especially to see Bob's name on that list. Uh, the kid's just been through so many injuries right now, and you, you just feel for the kid. Yeah, you, you it's, really do. it's it's terrible. Uh, you know, yeah, it's terrible. I I, I don't I don't. I don't know what else to say other than it's terrible. You know, I hope he red shirt. I hope he gets a, I mean, I, first off, I hope it's not that bad. 
Well, don't don't. It, Bab, Bob, you know. <laughs> Austin, don't ask us about pronunciations. Just tell us we're wrong. Because <laughs> we obviously don't know. Um, the. The point here is that. One, we don't know how severe it is. Um, it's not. It's it from the little because you know there's there's not a lot of talk about injuries that come out of Ohio State, so where a lot of the insiders kind of just don't cross that line. Um, the news, no one's saying exactly what happened or exactly what's wrong, other than you know it might be a, a lower body injury, and that I feel like the general the general whatever mood or whatever is fairly negative. So I don't think it's great. So hopefully um, if necessary, he gets a, a medical red shirt and gets to play somewhere next year. I, yep. I don't know with all of the wide receivers coming at Ohio state, if it'll be Ohio state or not, but I hope he gets on the field and proves something so that he can at least get on, a, get on a roster somewhere. Yep. Um, moving on to basketball here might be one of the last time we talk about basketball here <laughs> in a, for a while here. Um, Ohio State star EJ Liddell announced uh, earlier last week he would be um, putting his name for the 2021 NBA draft, but he will be still maintaining his eligibility. So he's not going to be um, taking a yeah an agent. Um, but if he doesn't get drafted, um, there, there might be a chance he could return back to Ohio State. But I, I think from everything I'm seeing, I, I think he's gone. Yeah, I wouldn't. I've been, I've been saying that Liddell's gone since December. So none of this is surprising, and I wouldn't hold out any hope that, even though he's maintaining his eligibility, that. He's going to come back. Uh, yep. Also on the way out is Musa Jallo. He's entering the transfer portal and, uh, you know, but, you know, transfer transfer portal giveth it also taketh away uh, Ohio State bringing in Penn State senior guard Jamari Wheeler. Uh, he's announced his transfer to Ohio State. Yeah, this year's going to be really interesting with COVID and all that. <clears throat> Just the eligibility and transfer rules where you're going to see what well, we're already seeing it. There's a lot of transfers happening all across the country. And it's not just Ohio state. Yeah. I mean, Duke's having it. North Carolina's having it. There's a lot this of big time schools that's having it. Basketball. I think I saw there, there are over 1000 players in basketball in the transfer portal. Yeah. So for Ohio state, just to have one, I'm happy to see it's just one, honestly, from everything that I've been seeing and reading so far. And Ohio State comes out even, loses one, gains one, evens out there. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, it, it, it agree, agreed, agreed, uh, Zach. It's still, it's still a shame to to lose Jalikas. I liked him. I, I thought he might have um, had some good opportunities at, at Ohio State, but it is what it is. Yeah. All right, Kyle, let's get into the meat of the episode. We've been promising this one for, I want to say, at least a month. So today we're actually doing it. We're picking, we're drafting our very own, our very own spring rosters. All right. Kyle will be picking for Team Scarlet. I will be picking for Team Gray. Uh, we will do a, a sort of a snaked Draft. Anyone who does fantasy football knows what a snake draft is. Um, basically, you pick first. Whoever gets first, whoever gets the first pick, only gets the pick once. And then after that, we're basically picking two at a time. Yep. All right. Well, now here is the question: Who goes first? Um. Let's see. Uh, I, I'm taking tiebreaker suggestions from the the active chat we have down below there. Uh, well, I guess 
Nomad said you won the ad read. So, um, and then I saw two Team Kyles. God, I, I guess you get the first pick. <clears throat> Even right. Austin says you won the ad read. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll go first. And I think um, Nomad stole my thunder. My first pick for our. Well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There are rules I want to explain yet. Oh. There are rules I want to explain yet. Um, okay. You have to draft a quarterback. You have to draft a running back. You have to draft five offensive linemen. Mm -hmm. You have to draft two wide receivers. Okay. Then you have two open offensive spots that you can do with whatever you please. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, on the defensive side, two defensive ends, two defensive tackles, at least lo three linebackers, at least two corners, at least one safety, and then you get an open spot to pick whatever position you please. Mm -hmm. Yes, Austin, um, their tight end is not necessary, so you can probably see where this is going, but... Uh... <laughs> Tight end is not required. He's uh, just one of those. And how are we grading out? Um, I, I think I think we're going to leave it up to uh, Sloop Cat votes. Yeah. Well, you yeah, you guys get to decide. All right. All right. I'll go first. My first pick, Jared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll go with number two. <laughs> we decide Jared lost already. We'll go with number two, CO2, Chris Olave. Ooh, interesting pick. Interesting pick. Mm -hmm. Um, I disagree. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Shocking. I know. Me being just disagreeing for disagreeing sake. Shocking. I know. I haven't even picked yet. <laughs> Why do they like you more than they like me, Kyle? I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. I am picking Thayer Munford. All right. And I get a second pick. Right, you want to write your sides down so I don't have to write them down or? Oh, God forbid. Fine, make me do all the work here. <laughs> all right. Who do you got for your second pick? My second pick. My second pick will be. I'm going with. Paris Johnson, Jr. We, we're going can, with the can. offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. Risky my butt talks. Paris Johnson Jr. is the future of this university. All right. Well, for my second round pick, I'll go with the leader of the, of the who should be the leader of the um, offensive lineman. I'll go with Harry Miller. It's a good pick. It's a good I'll pick. I'll go with the center. I'll go with the center there. And for my third round pick, Dude, who to go with? Who Kyle is who, on the clock. On a clock. Um, I mean, just like the good. podcast clock of not putting, just just not putting too much. You know what? I'm I'm going with a strategy here, though. Okay. I'm going to go with my with my third pick to screw Jared out. I'm going to go with number five, Wilson. Ooh, how getting both of the wide receivers. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Great value. Great value. <laughs> Not surprisingly, the chat's still on Kyle's side. <laughs> All right. All right, Jared, who you got for your third pick? You know, I feel like you're letting me get away with it. Okay. I feel like I feel like you're you're just letting me do this. Mm -hmm. Nicholas Petit Furry. Okay. Second, Zachary Harrison. Hmm. Interesting. And is that our first defensive player off the board? It is. Interesting, interesting, interesting. You haven't met your Harris son. I have to make sure I got that right. Harris son. All right. Um, 
Let's see. I th- I think I'm going to go since you who to go with, who to go with here. Let us in on that thought process. Let us in on that thought process. Well, I'm thinking about adding another offensive lineman here. Going to go with another offensive lineman. Um, I'm probably going to go with now here here he go he already went with NF NPF so I can't do NPF here. Mm, kind of going Yeah, it's definitely got to be a starter here. So it's probably yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking Jones. Thinking Jones here. Which one? Dwan. Ooh. Dewan. Dewan. Yeah, Dewan. you're you you need a you need a tackle cuz I've already taken <laughs> arguably the three best tackles. <laughs> I'll playing one of them at guard though, so it's fine. Yeah. All right. So for my for round 5 here. <laughs> cheer to cheer. Round 5 here. Cheater, like strategist, there, strategist, cheater, whatever. I, I feel like I feel like there's a lot of opportunity here. Um on the defensive defensive side. So I'm kind of kind of waiting here. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going with the the targets here on offense. I'm gonna go with this the main target for whoever's gonna be the quarterback here. And that is gonna be our main guy for the year of the year of 2021. And that is the year of the tight end. And of course I'm talking about Rockert. Uh you know I don't I don't dislike that pick at all. I don't, I don't dislike it. All right, Jared, you get to end out round number five here. I feel like there's two experienced defensive backs on Ohio State's roster. Seven Banks, however, is out for the spring and therefore not on my board. So mm-hmm. out for the, so I think Seven Banks would have probably been picked by now had he had he been available, but he's not. So I'm going to go grab the other uh, proven defensive back on the team, and I'm going to pick Josh Proctor. Oh, going with the safety there. Yep, good pick, good pick. All right, who do you got us starting off on round number six, Jared? Round number six. Round number six. So I'm looking over some of these defensive players, and... You know, I think I'm going to have to do it. I think I got to do it because uh, you're, you're just letting me do it. And this this one might be a bit of a stretch. It might be a bit of a risk. But I'm going to go Jack Sawyer. Reach. Oh, OK. OK. Listen, <laughs> when, they, when they're calling the kid the next Bosa, I listen. <laughs> okay kyle i'm gonna i'm gonna all right i'm gonna go probably probably play one for the fans here <laughs> I'm going for the fans here for the fans you already have rucker and <laughs> I'm going for the fans i'm gonna go for the guy that i believe should be wearing the the um buckeye block for this year the okay. guy who, the guy who came through so much versati- came through so much. Um, ha- if you're gonna say Haskell Garrett, he's also out for the spring. Ah, you're right, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm, you're right. Thank you. Um, so unless you're just looking for a, a guy who looks good, <laughs> dressed in his streets on the sideline and providing leadership, granted. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You know, let us go. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay on the defensive defensive line here. I'll go. I'll go with. Um. Um. I think I'll go with Smith. I think I'll go with Smith on the defensive line for Irik Smith. Hmm. I think that's a good pick. And then I'll go. 
Who to go with next? Who to go with next? Hmm, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, there's there's a lot. I definitely need to look on the the secondary. There's a lot of talent on the linebackers there. Um, you know, I'll you know what? Let's let's go with. You know, Austin, you, you you kind of that was the next person I was thinking on my list. There was Vincent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it was mm-hmm. Vincent there? So I'll, I'll go. With, I'll go with Vincent. What round does that put us in now, Kyle? Uh, that is round seven. Do you want to do a quick recap just for everyone playing at home? Sure. All right. So so far. You well, do your you got to pick one mine. for seven. You got to pick one for seven. Oh, okay. You pick one for seven. I will pick one for seven. I'm going to pick one for seven. And I feel like... I feel like it is... So, yeah, we, we need to get we need to get some big defensive guys up front... I'm going to go Jerry on cage. Got to see some time in the title game there. All right. So to round this out. So through seven rounds here, Jared has so far Munford NPF and um, Paris Johnson, uh, Jr. Paris Johnson, Jr. And then uh, you also have on the defensive end Harrison Sawyer, Cage, and Proctor. And then I have, um, I have. <laughs> I like um, Austin's keeping notes at home. <laughs> that is appreciated, Austin. I, I have I have Dewan Jones, Harry Miller, Olave, Wilson, Ruckert, and then on the defense I have Smith and Vincent. Uh, Nomad asks us the question. If this is the spring game, why are no quarterbacks gone? Well, the answer to that question is simple. We each only get to pick one. Mm -hmm. So what's the point in spending a high draft? Because like you either get Jack Miller and and rumors have it, Jack Miller closing the gap, making that a real, real competition with Stroud. You know, it's just. (laughs) Yep. All right, All right, I get us so, another pick. Is that what's happening right now? Yeah, you want to do another pick, or do you want to do a quick ad read here? Yeah, yeah, let's do an ad read. Let's do an ad read. Um, let's see. I'm gonna go with the Iron Bean Coffee Company. We talked some uh, some of their flavored coffees, uh, but here's the thing about the Iron Bean Coffee Company: Ohio based company. It's a veteran owned company. All of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Integrity is at the top of their list. They do everything right. For example, you know, they don't even roast your beans until you order them. So they're they're not sitting in a bunch of bags on a shelf in a in the back of a truck. No, none of that. First you order the beans, then they are roasted. So they are fresh every single time. Um, if you're a K-Cup person, they do have some of their more f- uh, popular flavors in K-Cup. There are gift cards available. You get free shipping over $50. And you, they also offer subscribe and save services. How could you go wrong? How could you go wrong with the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Um, They import all of their high quality coffee beans directly from farms in Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, and Indonesia. Where could you go? How could you go wrong? You can't. You cannot go wrong. Iron Bean Coffee Company, uh, again, everything's fresh. Everything's great. Um, one of my favorites I've been drinking a lot lately because I just had a big bag of it. And I like to open multiple bags because I like my coffee fresh. So uh, lately I've been drinking the Loki, uh, which is a wet process blend, higher in caffeine, lower in acidity, rich taste, fragrant. Um, 
Here's the thing. I, I didn't think I really liked a lighter roast coffee. It kind of never went below a medium. Uh, and the Loki changed my mind. If you want some different Nordic gods, maybe you're not a fan of Loki. You can, there's also a Thor and there's also an Odin. Uh, but there's lots of other coffees. You can find all of them at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, Mad Canadian Barbecue Company has three great seasonings for your enjoyment. He has the whole hog which is one of each seasoning over at the Mad Canadian's website. That is over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. He has the Just Send It, which I like to call our introductory box. It has an all-around great collection. It's, it's their most versatile seasonings, including the S&P Bud, your basic salt and pepper, the Snore and Heat, give you that little bit of a kick, the Cajun to give you that Mexican-style blend, or the Smoked to get you that smoked uh, taste <laughs> there. Um, you get to save money by bundling there, and you could even save even more by using that promo, co promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout SLOOPCAST10. Uh, the other box set that he has, probably my favorite, is the Sweet Heat. Um, I like to call it the, the wing set, just because everything in here goes great with chicken wings. Four Horsemen, his hottest um, spices, the Discord, his next hottest one. Not, not quite as hot, but still pretty hot. The Old Fashioned and the Two Border, which kind of gives you that maple taste, maple red pepper taste in it. Um, yes, that that's right. Yeah. Um, be sure to check those out. Again, check all those out, out over at the MadCanadianBBQ.com. Again, the MadCanadianBBQ.com. Okay, Kyle. So we just completed round seven and I'm opening up round eight. Is that what's happening right now? You are good, sir. Yes. All right. I'm opening up round eight. Uh, looking down through my options here. Um, I'm going to feel like there's some really good options in that position. So I'm going to go and uh, what, hold on. Who do you have on your defensive line, Kyle? You have Vincent and Smith. Is that correct? I have Vincent and Smith. All right. I'm going to go with Kai Hamilton. Okay. The up upcoming defensive tackle here. That's a that's a good pick there. Good Another pick there. reach. How dare you? <laughs> All right. For my eighth pick, to address a little bit more on the line there, I will go with Matthew Jones. I'll, I'll have I'll have the Jones brothers on my team here. He is a tackle. Mm -hmm. Or wait a minute. Are you, are you asking me or are you asking Kyle? Or I guess it's it's true in either. Because <laughs> Jones can play either. Oh, mm -hmm. you were asking me? Yeah, defensive tackle. I already have my two defensive ends. Let's see. All right. Um, I'm going to go with my, my next one here, a... Guy with really high potential. Um, we'll see. We'll see how much of a splash he'll be able to do with the three seniors ahead of him gone. I'm going to go with um, Mitchell, linebacker. Mitchell, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So are we starting the the linebacker run? Is that what's happening? Oh, we'll see. Let's 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 see if Jared picks um as Buckeye's ex as Tathan Martell at linebacker. <laughs> uh pass. <laughs> All right. So I get two picks. Mm -hmm. And if we're gonna if we're gonna go if we're gonna start the the linebacker run, I'm gonna go with Tommy Eichenberg. Okay. And next, I'm going to go with Cody Simon. 
Hmm. All right. Going young. Going young on those linebackers. <laughs> and I blow it. No, I didn't. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. No, I didn't. Believe me. No, I didn't. <laughs> um, you know what? I'll go with I'll go with experience. I'll, t- I'll take the other experienced guy. I'll go with Dallas Gant. I'll take Gant for the first one there. And then for my next one. Oh, boy. Let's see. If I look down here, looking here, looking here, I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with a legend. I'm going to go with legend. Ooh. I'm going to go with legend. Kyle going young on those corners. Mm-hmm. Of course, I don't know how much of an option you really <laughs> I mean, with, with all honesty, with seven banks out, uh, Cam is still out. He won't be won by the end of the year. He, he won't be won by the end of the year um, and, unless the seven banks injury is worse than we expect or he picks up a fresh. If seven banks is healthy, he's the number one corner all year. Mm-hmm. All right, Jared, who do you have here? All right. So making me a little bit nervous with that cornerback pick. So um, <laughs> I'm going to go with Cameron Martinez. Cameron Martinez. Okay. And I'm going to go with Tyreek Johnson. Tyreek Johnson. So I pick up both my corners. Give me a moment here to type this out. All right. All right. I'm going with a position we haven't even talked about yet at all, Jared. Uh, even there's a few. About. There's a few. Maybe. I, I I don't want to get up and um, open up my closet here to pull up a, a number 32 here. Hey, Austin, a go, lot I'm of guys, with, a lot I'm of gonna guys go are going to get smoked by Wilson and Olave. I'm going to go with Henderson. <laughs> yeah, Tyreek and Cameron are going to get smoked. Yeah, I'm going to go with Henderson. Okay. Henderson for my 12th pick. I, I mean, Kyle's Randy passing Carroll's- over... Some more veteran off, uh, some more veteran running backs, and going straight for the freshman. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to finish it off by picking out my quarterback. Ooh, I'm going to go my quarterback with good old number thirteen here. Round thirteen, that is. That is round thirteen. Yes, um, he doesn't wear number thirteen though. <laughs> but I'm going to go with CJ. Stroud. Good old number seven. Hey, I could actually pull them up right now. Hold up one second here. Hold up one second. What, what is he doing? What is he doing? One second here. here CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud wears seven. Number yeah. 32 and number seven right here. <laughs> oh, Kyle. This is peak Kyle. If you don't know Kyle, this is peak Kyle. <laughs> all right, Jared, all right. Who, do you, who do you have jared lathon ransom part safety i might use him a little bit as a linebacker as well kind of in a hybrid hybrid situation all right so you're going to have him as your open defensive here well i already have a safety so yeah yep okay And then I'm going to take a look around, take a look around, and I'm going to going to pick. I'm not who I want. Who's the backup center? Kyle picked proper center already. Who's the backup center? 
I, I don't need offensive playmakers yet. It's all good. I'm fine. Ohio State has plenty to go around. <laughs> I'm picking where Ohio State's the thinnest. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go with... I need, I'm going I'm to finish out the offensive line. So give me Enoch Vamahi. And Luke Whipler. Whoops, that is my side. Sorry, hold up one second. Vahami for number 13. And who else? Luke Whipler at center. Vamahi at guard, Whipler at center. All right. All right. So I don't have to worry too much about the offensive line anymore. So that, thank you, Jared. Let me concentrate a little bit more. On... You mean kind of like I don't have to worry about quarterbacks, running backs, <laughs> wide receivers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we're not picking special teams, Nomad. <laughs> mm, I'm going to go with someone young here. Okay. Is someone young. Let what, us what do you, what do you go. Thinking? Trying to leave too much dead air in there. What are you thinking? I know. I apologize. <laughs> there. I'm looking here. I'm looking at who you have. I'm going to go with um with young. Go with Young at linebacker. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Craig Young. Going to go with Young, finishing out my linebackers there, and then I will go with. Who do you have back here? I'll go with I'll go with Hooker as my safety then. Um, I I don't I don't believe he is. He's currently suspended from the team. I, I don't believe he's currently with the team. Hmm. Safety is a tough position then right now, isn't it? Huh. I want, starting to wonder why I took Josh Proctor so early, aren't you? Yes. Uh, we'll go. No, Rancy is gone think, already. So I don't think, I think so either, Buckeye Zach. No, nah, I think, I think I'll, I think I'll go with Hickman then. Yeah. I think, I think, I think that's your best bet with who's I think, left. I think Hickman's probably the best option there. So. All right. It's your turn, Jared. It is my turn. Let's see. I have my offensive line fleshed out. Uh, that's that's my only that's that's my only spot on offense. Um, and I'm all filled up on defense, with the exception of a linebacker. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to finish out the defense. I'm going to uh, pick up Hope. I, I have two young guys. Two young guys at linebacker. I'm going to bring in a veteran. At linebacker to to be a bit of a leader, I'll bring in I'll bring in Pope. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And I get one more pick, and it's time to start. It's it's time to start looking at them wide receivers. I, I think that's that's where we got to go right now. And I'm gonna go with my first pick, Jackson Smith Ninjimba. All right. Well, I'm going to add in Jared. I'm going to finish up my. Yep. Yep. Nomad beat me to the punch there. I'm going to finish <laughs> up my board receiver and I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with Fleming. I'm going to go with Fleming here. Okay. All right. So that's your last op, uh, open offensive spot. That is. Um, who do you have? I want to make sure I'm not picking. All right. I'll finish up. I'll I'll put in I'll put in Noah Potter as my Ooh. defensive end. Noah Potter. Put in Noah Potter there. All right. Back to you here. This is round 17. All right. All right. All right. All right. I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh let's see. Nothing is in reach anymore here. It's only steals. <laughs> <laughs> only steals from here on out. 
Uh, let's see. We have. I'm going to go with. Emeka Ibuka. Mm hmm. And then after that, I'm going to go with Guy Scott Jr., who is kind of playing tight end right now, if if uh, if the doctor is to be <laughs> believed. Allegedly, he's playing some tight end right now. I don't know that he's got the frame for it, but allegedly he's going to play some tight end right now. All right. Coming down on those last few picks, Kyle, your offensive line's looking a little thin. Uh, yep. I got two more here. Who do I, who's left here on the offensive line here? Who do we have? Darn. Are, is the offensive line really picked over right now, Kyle? I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm so, so sorry, Kyle. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not really. It's all good. <laughs> um, we will go with. Just want to make sure you're not picking any of these here. I think I'll go with um, Jacoby. Okay. I'll go, All with, right. go with Jacoby. I mean, it's it's a guard here, so I mean, I got I'm, I feel pretty good with my tackle. So um, Jacoby filling in there in a guard, I think would be would be fine. Yep, I agree. And then the last one here. <laughs> Let us do. I think you're probably going to have to pick a tackle and move him inside. <laughs> I probably, <laughs> I may have to. Yeah, I, I think you probably should. Mm -hmm. Um, I will pick. I'll pick Friday. I'll Friday. Pick Friday. Oh, you went. Def oh, you're on the defense. Yes. Sorry, I thought you were looking for your last offensive lineman. Nope. I went defense there. Yeah, that's a, Tyler Friday. Now, again, I know Kyle's already said only steals from here on out, but that's that's a pretty good steal at this point. I am kicking him inside. That's not a bad strategy. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go with. Yeah, three picks left, Jared. Jamison Williams. Jamison Williams. We saw some good flashes from him last year. Absolutely. So okay. I use both of my open offensive spots on wide receivers. Unless, okay. of course, we believe that Guy Scott Jr. is, in fact, going to play tight end this year. All right. And look at this, everybody. I just, I just want everybody to note here. Jared's last two picks mm -hmm. is a running back and quarterback. There's so only who could be picked. And I, I don't know that there's any real distinction at this point. All right. All right. Who do you, who do you got in which one are you picking? At the running back position, I will be picking Mayan Williams. Ooh, Mayan Williams. Ooh. So Teague does not go on the board here at all. He does not. I almost it was between Williams and Teague for me. For the record, it was between Williams and Teague for me. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I will go. Just want to make sure. Let's see. You picked him. I'm looking on cornerbacks i'm looking at cornerbacks right now i th think i'll go with um with brown i think i'll go with brown as my last corner mm -hmm. and then the last pick here i gotta see who's left in the offensive lineman <laughs> <laughs> uh it, to, to speed things along i think your best bet at this point i think would probably be taking max ray even though he's a yeah. tackle and bumping him inside mm -hmm. that's kind of what i'm thinking here you got someone um got a junior um 
bump them inside there. Yeah. It's kind of what I'm thinking there. Unless I want to take a, take a risk and go with a younger person, but I think you're right with Ray. Yeah. Now the question, everybody who's listening in, which quarterback is Jared going to pick? Is it Miller or is it McCord? It's Miller. Uh, Reports out of camp are fantastic around Jack Miller right now. Um, CJ Stroud apparently came into camp as the leader, but Jack Miller's closing in on that. CJ Stroud might have some, uh, a little bit of interception throwies right now, having a little, having a little tough time holding on to that ball. Apparently Jack Miller has superior grasp of the offense, superior accuracy. Is, is what I am hearing. Do not count out Jack Miller. Oh, I missed one somewhere. You missed one. Oh, you mm-hmm. have an open defensive spot. No, no, that, that makes sense. You had the first pick, and then we've been going two, 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 two the entire time. All right. So, yeah, you actually have, you get first and last. Okay. All right. Um, so the last pick of the draft, Kyle needs his 11th defensive player. He can go with literally any position right now. Uh, any it's position. his open defensive spot. Um, he could go with a linebacker, a safety, a corner. Uh, he could go with some sort of Chicago bear front and go with five defensive linemen if he wants to. Hmm. Um. If I'm looking down here, <laughs> give me Demario at corner. <laughs> oh, let's see here, Austin. When you draft a team, you can put Demario McCall at corner. <laughs> I will go with let's 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 get a young guy in here. Let's okay. let's go okay. with. Let's go with Denzel. Oh, true freshman. Go with, with the true, true freshman, freshman we'll pick. Denzel Burke. I don't know if I'd have passed over Watts personally, but hey, go with that true freshman pick. Okay. I like I'll it. Go with that. Man, my numbers are off. I don't know where I duplicated your numbers, but either way. No, it's not that important. The round. You just talking about the round numbers? Yes. Okay, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not super worried about it. All right, Kyle, let's review. Let's review. I have on my off. I'm going to do my offense. Then you can do your offense. I'll do my defense. You do your defense. I have Jack Miller at quarterback. Mine Williams at running back. My offensive line from left to right is Thayer Munford, Enoch Vamahi, Luke Whipler. Uh, I have Paris Johnson Jr. at right guard. I have NPF at tackle. Kyle had that backwards in the graph, but I forgive him. Um, my wide receivers are Emeka Abuka, Jackson Smith Ninjimba, Juice Williams. And at my wide receiver tight end flex, I have G. Scott Jr. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is my I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him a tight end. I'm a believer Ryan Day. I'm going to call him a tight end. Uh, so that's my 11. That's my 11 offense. All right. In my offense? Yeah. My offense, I have CJ Stroud. Henderson at my running back. I have both Jones at tackles. I have Jacoby and Ray out in guards. And I have... Harry Miller and center. And I have a fantastic group <laughs> of pass catchers. A fantastic group for your, um, for your wide receivers and tight ends. Yes. A true tight end. I have Olave Wilson Fleming out wide and then Ruckert at, as my tight end. All right. My defense, uh, my defensive ends are Zach Harrison and Jack Sawyer. Uh, 
My defensive tackles are Cage and Hamilton. My linebackers are Eichenberg, Simon, and Pope. My cornerbacks are Cam Martinez and Tyreek Johnson. My safety is Josh Proctor. And my somewhat linebacker, somewhat safety, sort of a cover safety guy is LaFon Ransom. So that close to the line of scrimmage safety, Ransom. Mm -hmm. All right. And I have on my starting defensive line, Smith Potter, Vincent and Friday, moving Friday inside to get a little bit of that um, Rushman mentality. And then in my linebackers, I have Young, Mitchell and Gant, a little bit of mix of experienced and young guys there. And then my defensive backs, um, probably more scarce, but um, <laughs> I, I feel pretty confident about them. I have Cabos, Brown, and Burke as my corners, and then I have Hickman playing my deep man there. There you go. So that's uh, the ultimate spring football draft. No one's doing it better. I don't know if anyone's doing it. We might be the first people to ever do this, but damn it, we did it. So someone someone tell Coach Day that we we did we did this for him. We picked out at least the starting twenty two uh, for each of the teams, and so, you're welcome. So who who now the better question here, Jared? Which team out of everything who whose team from what we just told you is better? Uh, so let's do this. I'm going to drop a Team Kyle emoji in the Discord, and then I'm going to drop a uh, Team Jared emoji in the Discord. And everyone in there, uh, drop an emoji reaction on the team you like more. Uh, only vote once. Don't, don't cheat. So you guys do that, and then we're going to do some Ask Sloopcast questions, and we'll come back and see who won. All right. I, it, it's going to be Kyle. <laughs> Everyone? Oh, All someone right, finally voted for me. <laughs> All right. Let's, 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 um, let's look here, Jared, at some, at some questions here. Um, first one, Austin Formation here says, ask, because is, is the episode of the Sloopcast brought to you by a Brought to you as by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company and the Iron Bean Coffee Company as well. Yes. 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 It is. Austin yes, knows it is. how to get to get his question right on the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Nomad. Is this the year? Is this the year of the fullback for Ohio State? No. <laughs> no. Not this year. Not this year. You, you you realize how many wide receivers there are on this team? Do you realize? the stud they have at tight end on this team. Do you realize how many running backs they have on this team? You think they're going to throw a fullback in there? Takes up a spot. It's not a spot you want to, you, you want to, you look Jackson Smith and Jimba in the eyes and say, Hey, we need you to come off the field. We're going to put a non-scholarship fullback on the field real quick. <laughs> the only way you're going to see uh, a, a bunch of fullback play this year is if they're just trying to throw some weird, looks out there and it's actually just Rucker behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Rucker yeah. will just be lined up at tight end, lined up at fullback. Yep. Um, Tempe Buck asks us, do you think we see Lathan Ransom tested at corner now with the Banks injury, at least to give flexibility with the lack of depth? Uh, it's a possibility. I think that they're already asking him to sort of play that cover corner position, ask him to come up to the line of scrimmage a little bit. Um, so, yeah, um, I, I think you could see him. If not. If not, I, you'll see him up on the line of scrimmage covering people, even if it's not at corner. But, yeah, I think it's a possibility you see Ransom. It really just depends upon the young guys. How good are the young corners doing right now? Because what you have in the cornerback room right now is seven banks. Now, of course, he's not he's not involved in the spring. Um, you have Cam, who is coming off of an injury. You have some old guys who haven't got on the field much and some young guys who are chopping at the bit. So there's a lot of inexperience, even 
though there is some age there. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think anything's possible. Ohio State has been playing with uh, what they call their best 11 defense, which. I mean, so who knows what sort of packages we might see this year? They're kind of saying, hey, we're going to put the best 11 on the field mm -hmm. and we'll see how, what that looks like. <laughs> Yep. That, it's that old Bill Belichick UFO scheme. Uh, Buckeye Zach asks us, if Jack Miller wins the starting job, will Kyle and Jared do 10 shots of moonshine? No. No, absolutely not. No. No. I'll pass. No. Yeah. <laughs> Austin <laughs> asks us, if 2021 is the year of the tight end, what is 2022? What is next year the year of? Uh, Zach asks us, could 2022, well, he asks us, will the fullback ever return? Could that be 2022? No and no. <laughs> um, first and foremost, we need to see if 2021 actually is the year of the tight end. And if it's not, it's the year of the tight end again in 2022. <laughs> Because it's the year of the answer. tight end until it isn't. I know this answer. Austin Formation. Who on the roster is most suited to play fullback who is not a tight end? I know the answer to this one. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I want to hear yours first. Well, you you have an answer. I, I have to think about it. I'm going to go with the guy I believe should be wearing the Buckeye block, Garrett. We saw, we saw how good of hands he has being able to make an interception – for for a big guy touchdown last year, at fullback though, yeah, give give Garrett the full, but give Garrett the the um, football there, right there at the one yard line, bulldozing his way into the end zone. Give me Garrett, get the big guy in there. I'm going Jack Sawyer. He's already wearing thirty three. It feels fitting. Yeah, that, that does seem fitting, doesn't that? <laughs> Um, let's see. Any other questions? Any other questions? Uh, Sun Card asks, how often will the defense be in a 4-2-5, four, four defensive linemen, two linebackers, five defensive backs on first down? Uh, I'm going to say not often. That's a abnormal role for them and it's honestly just not even that simple anymore with the way they use that hybrid safety linebacker corner so that that could just as easily be called a a four three four or just you know a four three um but they yeah he says that's mm -hmm. a nickel look but they bring a safety down yep, yep. yeah all right jared the all-time question of our age okay Brawley asks, best gaming system of all time. Best gaming system all time? That's impossible. They, how, how do you compare an NES to the machines they're putting out now? Do, is the SNES actually better? I mean, I think so, but that's just because I was eight at the time. And anything that was amazing when you were eight will always be the best thing ever it's it's that seven to like 14 range whatever happens at that point in your life is the best thing that's ever happened for that thing in your life that's when the best snl cast was <laughs> that's when the best Ohio State football team was. That's when the best music was. <laughs> By your perception, whatever happened in from like 8 to 14, 15, whatever. <sighs> Buckeye Zach. Uh, well, Kyle, what, what do you say? So I'm just my my Base. completely biased answer is the SNES. So my bias, I think, is also the SNES. But thinking, but thinking of like when it came out and what it meant for the gaming industry, I really I really think it's probably the 
PlayStation 2, honestly. I, I never really got into PlayStation 2 um, or PlayStation in general. I did own PlayStation 2 um, Eventually. later on in, in its lifespan, but it was only like for four games. But it's based still off of, from like a market share standpoint, the most it, successful console of all time, is it not? Agreed. Yes. No, I'm just like... Yeah, I mean that's that's not agree or disagree. I think the PS2 was, I believe, the most like from a business standpoint, the most successful console. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I think I think in terms of like what Nintendo's doing with their latest console, making everything more mobile, because that's kind of the trend that, that everything's going right now. I think that's that's kind of the trend I see a lot of what a lot of people are going to want in the future, in my mind. Something that you can you can take with you wherever you want. You're not having to be stuck and play on this one TV. And yes, Nomad, I agree with you on that last statement. Uh, Suncard19 asks us, what is the greatest beer of all time and why is it Yingling? I will maintain that if I ever have to buy like 32 of something, if I have to buy a if I have to buy beer for a bunch of people who not not all of them are going to be crafty drinkers, but I also need to fill like an entire cooler of something, it's going to be Yingling. Mm -hmm. Uh that that's probably my go-to in that if I have to like I said, buy an entire cooler's worth of something I, it's probably going to be yingling i think that's my favorite like cheap beer mm -hmm. all right last question here and we'll have to end today's episode will you jared ever take sun cards weather questions seriously no <laughs> i love you sun card <laughs> uh, well kyle let's let's not end the episode yet we have to see who won let me scroll back up it's very busy chat um, Kyle, I won. Who did not vote for me? Only Who Buckeye Zach vote voted for, for you. I think some, I think some votes were retracted. You had the early lead. Sun card. Don't make, don't make, don't make me, um, revert what I just said to you. <laughs> Sun card <laughs> voted for my team. Listen, maybe it's not about you, Kyle. Maybe my team was just superior. Listen, your defensive backs are weak and your offensive line is weak. I will roll you. I will roll you, Kyle. Team Gray will roll you. <laughs> um, this is a very good observation from Austin. He says, I like Kyle's team. Um, is a team I want to watch every Saturday and could very well blow Jared's team out. But I trust Jared's team more to turn a 27 to 24 win in late November. That's because Kyle's team is basically like a is like Oregon during Chip Kelly. That's Kyle's team is like Oregon in the Chip Kelly era. It's it's it, it's great for whipping on small teams, but you go up against someone with a legit defensive line. Good luck getting any passes off because Kyle's offensive line is garbage. Sorry, yeah. Kyle. All right. That's fun. <laughs> I, had fun. I had fun. We had fun. <laughs> That's all that matters. All right. Let's end the episode. Um, hey, some cards, right? Uh, they're the same uniforms, just different colors. Anyway uh the <laughs> that's that's the end of today's show go to the sloopcast.com where we have a bunch of uh links that take you to other places that may or may not interest you uh we have uh merchandise kyle's wearing some sloopcast merchandise right now uh that's our crew parody legally it is a parody uh it is our crew parody sweatshirt uh you can also get that same in a in a t-shirt and on multiple colors and all sorts of things uh and you can find that at merch.thesloopcast.com or you can just go to thesloopcast.com and and find that link you can also find our 7071 store uh which is sort of our non podcast merchandise podcast merchandise alternative it's just sort of like a bunch of like yay ohio stuff is, is just generally how i uh describe that and and uh, uh you know there's a links to a bunch of youtube and the audio only version of the podcast there's links in there 
Um, there's just there's all sorts of links. And don't forget the Patreon. Uh, if you want to join these uh, these vagabonds down here in the live chat, uh, they get to listen and comment live and ask questions live. Uh, you, you can join them for as little as three dollars a month. Yes, Nomad, you're the vagabond. I know. Uh, <laughs> I was I almost said nomads, but then I was like, I can't say nomads because nomads, the nomad. And then I just sort of went, took a parallel step over to vagabond. Uh, nomads are rolling stone. What can I what can I say? And uh, that's all the stuff. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Honestly, I don't, but um, that's fine. I, I think I think it's something that should say just because of because of who he is and all that. Just Roy Williams announces his retirement at um, at UNC, thirty three years over at the um, over with the Tar Heels there. Um, so Kyle, you're you're in that area. You you live in that Duke, North Carolina, North Carolina State area. Uh, how's, how's the general mood? How's the general mood? It's a respect. And with some people, it's a relief. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But respect, but respect in general. That's so is it, is it, is it a thing that most people feel like, needed to happen at this point is that generally it, the vibe it, it was especially these last two years have been oh yeah no no one's no one's denying his career buck isaac by any means yeah yeah but his last two years had just been definitely ugh. but yeah but no overall overall yeah it's it, it was a good it was a good run in what he's done at unc for the past 30 plus years Absolutely. Um, amazing basketball coaching then, career. Then the next question is going to be, who is Coach K next? Yeah. I mean, he's up there too. <laughs> he's up. Th- they should go out together. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, that's that's it, Kyle. Anything else? That's it. Crew, crew game starting up soon. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. All right. Uh, that's it. That's the end of today's show. Tonight's ending music. I'm actually wearing their T-shirt right now. Uh, oh, I've, I'm flipped on the camera. I can't do this. Uh, the <laughs> uh, this is their name is not Old Soul. This is the name of their album. Um, <laughs> that's that's Dark Buckeye Zach. Buckeye Zach. That's dark. Although I used to say the same thing about Joe Pa. And it was almost true. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to leave, leave off the tag to that joke that I was thinking. I'm, I'm not going to say it. Um, hey, Kyle, can you, can you read the back of my shirt for me? Um, maybe. Can, can you read it? No, I can't read it. No. I, I really can't because it is very bright. Oh yeah. Listen, I may have forgot the band's name. Let's just be kick me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good, Sunkar. It's good. Hey, hope hope the weather hope the weather's doing pretty well for you, Sunkar. <laughs> he already voted, Kyle. You, you I know. can't. You can't take it back. I know, I know. Maybe an earthquake will come by. <laughs> you know, we're trying to finish the show and Kyle's, you know, it's, it's totally Kyle's fault. It's definitely not my fault. I, I'm definitely not anywhere near at no earthquakes are not weather. I'm not anywhere near at fault for any of this, for the record. Just want to point that out. All right. Uh, the hold on. Um, get it? Fault? <laughs> that's that's good punnery right there. 
Austin, that's good punnery. See, now it's your fault, Austin, and it's still not my fault. Nothing is ever my fault. I am perfect. Just for the record. I'm looking something up real quick for me, Kyle. Stall. Um, stall. Let's see here. I have a, I have a question here. So my wife, my wife and I are watching, rewatching the um, all all of the Marvel movies, minus the ones that are not Disney owned. Um, all of the ones available on Disney Plus. Yes, yes, in chronological order. Which Iron Man's the worst one? Which Iron Man is it? One, two, or three? Two. Oh, Austin agrees with me. Yeah, and it, yeah. I agree. It's easy. At, for, at first, for me, it's like Iron Man 3 for me. But then as I kind of started thinking more about it, I'm like, okay, maybe it is too. Iron yeah, Man 3 sticks with you, and that's why it's good. Yeah. yeah, you have to really, like, there's a lot meaning behind 3 when you really think about it. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I hate a Captain Marvel movie as well. Yes. Kyle, I'm I'm on the struggle bus over here. I want to let you know that. <laughs> but the um, I said I was going to do this band. I forget the band's name. <laughs> but but the, the, the second, I'm really struggling right now. The, the second um, I'm trying to cover it for you. The second Thor movie wasn't all that good either. After none of the it. Thor movies were good until Ragnarok. I'll say it. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like this is my first time seeing Ant Man. I still don't care for it. No, it's, <laughs> I still don't care for it. Man. It's just fine. Mm. All right, Kyle, I, haven't, I, I haven't seen this. I haven't seen the second one yet, Austin, but I did not like Ant-Man. It's not, it's not bad. It's just totally forgettable. That's, that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. All right, Kyle, I can't find the name of this band, uh, even though it's literally written on my back right now. So we're going to, we're just going to, we're going to go with an audible. We're going to go with the band, uh, called Brat Curse instead. So go ahead and check them out. Um, I, I can't. I'm I'm having the baddest brain fart ever, and it's embarrassing. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're <laughs> we're going with Brat Curse instead. We'll we'll, we'll get these guys next time. Uh, so with all that being said, I want to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Brat Curse. Hi, YouTube. And of course, our, our, our lovely Discord folk down We're there as well. Still talking about Marvel here. Yeah, you, you got a bunch of people in a Discord talking about Marvel movies. <laughs> this episode has been a fun mess. You know, Austin, I'm going to take that as a compliment. <laughs> yes. And by the way, you aren't wrong. <laughs> so... I've I, I've I've seen both so I've seen both Spider Mans in theater, but unfortunately I can't rewatch them now and unless I buy. Oh, I forget forget which which one I need to buy in order to. Yeah, see they're not it. on it's, Disney. It's not in Disney is, Plus is the long right now. Long. But the second one, the they were both good. The second one was really good. Yeah, uh, exactly what Austin said. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, I can't rewatch them. Same thing with Hulk. I still haven't watched Hulk, and I it's don't fine. think I'm going to watch you Hulk. You don't need to. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, don't. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's let's go and end the episode. Once again, I would like to thank Brat Curse for ending today's episode. And I once again would like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's episode. Um, Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned company. Uh, we talked about why you should buy from them. Uh, reasons beyond just that sentence. Uh, we talked about some of their flavored coffees. Uh, let's talk about some of their dark roast. Uh, there's the Fierce, uh, which is 100% Arabica beans. Um, 
it gives you the edge and confidence to slay the day. Uh, there's the Rocco, which is also available in a medium roast. You can get the Rocco in, in either medium or dark roast, your choice. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty special, uh, Ethiopian roast. Um, it just, it's, it's, it's a great coffee. It insists on being noticed. Uh, then there is the Thor, which is somewhere between a medium and a dark, uh, then there's the drink from the skull of your enemy, which is a traditional Indonesian coffee. Uh, it's smoky, it's creamy. Um, it has notes of cedar and sweet tobacco. Uh, I think it's my favorite dark roast from them. Uh, Nomad says he's drinking it right now. Seriously? We're recording this awfully late for you to be drinking coffee right now. Uh, there's the fear no evil. Uh, which is not just a dark roast, but a black roast. Uh, it is devoid of light. It has sheen of polished, uh, polished armor. Um, then there's the integrity, uh, which is the mainstay of the Iron Bean Coffee selection. And they do note that if you like uh, espressos, that this would be a great, uh, a great option for you. This one makes a great espresso, 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 espresso. Uh, so yeah, all of that and more can be found at the ironbeancoffee.com. It's just iron bean. I don't, I threw a V in there for some reason. It's just ironbeancoffee.com. Uh, it's iron bean coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by the mad Canadian barbecue company. Told you about the, um, the two box sets that the mad Canadian has. Let me talk you, talk to you about the whole hog. Now you're asking, Hey, what are, what what is or are all of the seasonings that the Mad Canadian has to offer? Well, I'm about to tell you right now. We have the Brits blend, the coffee and Q, the Sonora heat, the Cajun, the smoked savory two border, the S and P bud, the Kerry steak discord, the Ope, four horsemen, the old fashioned, and of course the Mad Hatter. All of these just sound so delicious right now. Jared's making me exactly what Buckeye Zach say, craving red meat right <laughs> now. <laughs> um, all the seasonings just great in their own ways. Um, if you're not sure which one to get, get the whole hog. You you save you save when bundling together and save ten percent more when using that promo code Sloopcast ten Sloopcast one zero at checkout for ten percent off your entire order. Don't forget to also check out um, his social media sites to check out where he and his food truck are heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. <laughs>